Hey everybody, it's Elizabeth and Joanne with World's Cup of Joe. Awaken your soul, your channel for learning how to balance and neutralize the energy for your twin flame connection. Today we're going to be talking about how to balance the energy when your person has come back in, but now they've stopped initiating contact. What do you do? So before we get into our video, how do Joanne and I know how to teach and guide you in this balanced, neutralized twin flame energy? Well, it's because we are balancing it daily in our own lives with our own twin flames. We've been through it all. We've been through it all with you guys. We've been through the separation. We've been through the dark night. We've been through the push and pull. And now we are in permanent relating experiences with our twins. We both live with our twin flames and we watch this energy play out day in and day out. And through our experiences and through helping so many beautiful souls, we have learned how to guide others to the same place of balanced, neutralized energy so that not only you could be magnetic to your twin flame, but you can keep them permanently in your space. So before we start our video, I want to tell you two ways in which we can help you guys. For those of you that are not in contact with your twin flame in any shape or form, we highly recommend you check out our life-changing 30-day twin flame detox. And when I say it's life-changing, that is a complete understatement. It is life-changing. Go through our videos, look at the comments people have written for those that have done the detox, it seriously is transformative. And then what happens with the 30 day detox, people start magnetizing their twin flames back in. So they came to us, what do we do now? And that created a whole new program, which was our ultimate balancing program, which will teach you step by step how to sip in your twin flames energy without pushing again how to do it from first contact, how to do it from first date, first kiss, you get the drill. We show you and guide you step by step in how to do that. So now on to our video. Hello, our loves. Let me go ahead and get us started. The question is, if mine starts and I'm not feeling peace, and the reason is because mine is judging his backed off from a month ago, when he was calling, texting, and wanting to see me all the time. Now he's too busy. And if he does call, it's for a hookup. I want to feel peace and choose me. If anyone else treated me like this, I'd block and move on. Can I do that with TF? I just can't be arsed right now to feel like this. So with this connection, you want to look within you on the part of you that does want to block and if the reason to block is because your person isn't reaching out to you and you need them to reach out to you so they can validate you and therefore you're blocking them it isn't for you the only ways that we would always encourage you to shift within your journey is to detach from the addictive energy by detaching from the part of you that is addicted to your person. And when you are doing something because of something that they're doing, it's not a genuine, authentic intent to choose you. If your question was, I really just want to feel better and I'm going to focus on me and I want to release having to look if they're contacting me. I want to focus on me and the language soul. As long as it has nothing to do with them reaching out to you or not, then you are balancing. But if you're making a decision to block because they're not reaching out to you, well, then you're just essentially doing it for attention for them to see that you're blo you've blocked them, right? It's it's almost playing games. It's like, well, they're not doing this, so because of that, this is what I would do. Now, if we want to get even even deeper with what you were saying, I'm not getting what I need from them, so therefore, because of that, I'm going to go ahead and block. And when you have elevated to this place of balancing, you have to figure out a way to 
look within on the part of you that wants to minimize more ways for the mind to do this for this, right? Because that's conditional love. Conditional love is I need you to do this to prove that I'm whole. I need you to do this X amount of times, right? Contacting me, re reaching out to me, contacting me, proving yourself to me X amount of times to prove itself to me so that I know we're one. When they are you, they don't need to contact you ever. They don't need to reach out to you ever. But there is a story behind that and the validation from that. Therefore, if they're not doing this, then this is what I'll do on the other side. If you decide to block for peace, to release, focus on you, and you're losing your peace from having to check and looking and, and finding them, then that's okay. That's totally fine. But if it's deeper than that, and you're like, for example, you're saying you feel like you're being used and all this, that's the energy you're sending out to your person, the story you're sending out to your person, the emotions and energies you're feeling, feeling into towards your person. And the way you would release that is to realign with soul, to balance your energy and to choose you. And if that does require you having to block because you're so distracted from trying to figure your person out, that's okay. But if the other reason behind it is they haven't reached out, they reached out to me more before we've hooked up and therefore they should reach out, then you're blocking for the wrong reasons and you're blocking in a sense of push. Blocking isn't to play games. Blocking is simply to release the addictive energy and to choose you. And when you're balanced enough, then you can balance the both of you. But there's no rush into blocking and unblocking based on their reaction to you. I'm gonna block if they don't contact me. I'm gonna unblock if they're contacting me. Do you see how you're still looking at the external versus the other one was how I feel? And I'm gonna gauge that and I'm gonna follow that intuitive guidance system of soul to allow me to choose which brings me more alignment with soul. And if it brings you peace to block and to fo focus on you and choose you, then that's fine, that's the answer. As long as mine wasn't involved in that and wanting more and expecting more from it. What do you think, Lev? Yeah, so I think that it has preference and expectation completely written all over this question and that's okay that's what we're here for is to remind you my love you are soul and you are in the place of mind with this question so with everything with balancing you're learning how to deal with the energies that are coming up for you so this is a perfect opportunity to say okay so he's not reaching out the way he was. What's going on with me? So we always want to we always want to go within and realize where our energy is at because our energy is the one that's dictating this connection. So if things are not going the way the mind wants with the connection, we need to go within. Where has my energy been? Have I been in mind or have I been in soul? Because if the connection's not where I want it to be, if they're not reaching out as much, if they're not doing, because remember, they will do all the doing when you're in soul. So if they are not doing, that means the mind's doing. You're now in a place of the mind having to do, 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 do in terms of energy. And that's the energy that's pushing. So you have to be able to say, okay, they're not doing doing. Therefore, my mind's doing too much doing and I need to take a step back. I need to come back to my presence. I need to come back to my intention and I need to focus back on me. So I really want you to sit with where the mind's at and be able to reflect on where was it? Where, where did my intention shift to them that they started to take a back step? A back step right because I'm sure the more and more you reflect on the energy that you're feeling because this is an energetic connection as you know my love you are so well versed in this connection I know you know all of this stuff so I'm just here to remind you follow the energy the energy is not biased as soon as you can realize where the energy shifted to 
I'm focusing on them. I'm focusing on them. I'm focusing on what they're doing. The mind's on them. The mind's on them. The mind's on them. Where was that? And then sit with why. Sit with why that shifted. Because why that shifted is the thing that you're trying to release. It's not the fact that you're focusing on them that has to be released. It's the why it shifted that needs to be released. And usually it's, well, I started shifting on them because I was seeking validation again from them. Or it felt so good to be loved by them and I wanted more of it. Or it felt so good to know that they were back in my in my life. And like, whatever it is, it's the why that needs to be released because it's the why that's bringing us the preference and the expectation. So find out where that energy shifted because this is where you're going to learn from. You're going to learn where that why was. You know, a lot of times for me, for example, it was that feeling of I'm, I'm going to try to tap back into it because it's been so long now. I try not to think about it. When my person would reach out, it was just that feeling of Maybe, maybe we will be together again. Maybe we will have the life I dreamed of. It was this whole future being planned out, this future that the mind was like, if I don't have this future, then life is not what it's supposed to be. And it was like this whole story of what a fairy tale was supposed to be. And he was my Prince Charming and my mind wanted the fairy tale. And every time he reached out, it was like this hope that the fairy tale would come and I would go into my mind, my mind, mind about it. And that's why I wanted the label. That's why I wanted to know he wants to propose at some point. It's when I shifted that energy, when I realized the why of being push and I could go into the place of releasing that and just being okay with what was that he could keep doing but he couldn't do and he couldn't keep coming in the more I fell into that story of needing him to do stuff and that's what I'm sensing with this question there's just so much need of him to do that it's taking him from his peace with you because this is all energy you don't need to say anything for him to feel to feel the uneasiness and the chaos that mind's feeling, they feel it through us. Bring yourself back to peace where you need nothing from him and he can feel that peace towards you. That's when he wants to be in your space because that's when you're the vibrational match to him. When you really get deep with it, right? Let's all just get really, really deep with this. Right. When Elizabeth said my person was going to fulfill all of mine's desires, right? This ever after picture that the mind has, this validation that it gets from your person, this confirmation, there becomes this like inkling of like, ooh, right? The the dreams from someone else fulfilling us that's that's what comes but that's not this journey all of you guys joanne I joanne you know you, yeah. I, I just got holy smokes and <laughs> i just got into my own head and my own realization yeah so you know how we look at our person as so godlike right and like this almost makes my mind want to cry like there's something coming up that needs to be released and it was like, as soon as I met my person, my person is tall, dark, handsome, like extraordinarily gorgeous. Uh, obviously, we all think our twins are amazingly good looking and mine is no different. And here I was for 14 years feeling invisible and feeling completely unworthy. And to the mind, it was like, almost like I needed to show him off. I needed to show him off because this man that I could never, ever, ever in my wildest dreams ever think that would be attracted to me is with me. And in my mind, it was like, if he could ever ask me to marry him and be with me and want me forever, it's going to show everybody that I'm finally worth noticing. And it's such a sad reflection on how I felt about myself at the time, that I needed to show off this gorgeous man this smart man, this man that I felt unworthy for, 
to everybody else so that maybe they could look at me with a sense of she is something. And that's where I was at. And now it's like, and I think that's part of why I never talk about him anymore is like, I don't ever need to prove to anybody that I'm worthy through somebody else. I prove that I'm worthy just being me and being love. And I radiate my own personality now that I never did before. I dimmed myself so much. I never showed my sense of humor. I never showed who I was. I never, I never allowed myself to be me because I wanted someone else. And I did this even before my person. I did this with my ex-husband. I did it with all boyfriends. I wanted to show that I was worthy because someone else loved me. I must be worthy if someone else can love me. And then, like I said, when I met my person, he was like far and beyond whatever I'd ever been with before. But now it's like, I will never give that power to anybody else to show how freaking valuable I am. I don't need to have a person next to me who's saying I'm willing to be with you the rest of my life to say that I'm good. I know I'm amazing. And it reconfirms that feeling every single day when I think about how freaking blessed I am to have been chosen to be awakened because I am a rare, I'm a rarity in this world. And I hone in on that goddess energy of being so freaking empowered because I'm awakened. And that's what I want to impress upon all of you guys. When you feel so low at times because of this journey, you're so freaking blessed to be on this journey because you are the chosen ones. And I can't stress that enough to know like all these people that we've been trying to impress our entire lives. And now it's like, holy crap, I'm awakened. I see what this world really is and no one else that I know really that I know is ever going to experience the beauty and wonder of this world that I now get to have revealed to me day in and day out. Wow. Like I never have to prove myself again because as soon as I even the mind even thinks that slightly, I remembered how I am awakened. Yeah. There's no one thing that your person needs from you to validate this soul that you are like I know I'm perfect I know I'm whole I know I'm complete I know that all I have to worry about is to be in the vibration of love that is my one only task in this this lifetime that I'm in this vessel right is I'm in the vibration and energy of love and anytime I'm looking to my person and others to validate and complete me, I've now given my power away. And I've released my worthiness, my wholeness, who I am, in the whims of someone else's power. And to give it away like that, right? To be in the low vibration of, he, he doesn't want me, he's using me, right? That's not soul. Soul is love. Soul is free. In thinking, he doesn't love me, he's using me, is a reflection of how you feel about yourself, right? Yeah. Exactly yeah. what I was just talking about. Like, how could my person possibly be with me when I'm nowhere near how good he is, how good looking he is? But when you say something with a statement of he's just using me, that reflects that you feel you could be used, that you are so unworthy that you could be used. Yeah. When you know how worthy you are and my love, you are so freaking worthy. Mm -hmm. you, will you will never ever think that someone's using you again because it just yeah. will never happen. It won't. No one can use you because I'm freaking awakened. No yeah. one can touch me because I'm awakened. I yeah. create my reality. No one uses me. I create. I am the creator of my experience. And there is no one that could ever use me again. Mm -hmm. And that energy and that vibration of they're there, right? They're doing it's separation consciousness. It's like they're doing this to me. You're in that victim mentality. We look at comments all the time on our YouTube and we can feel the vibration and energy of where that client is at. And we can feel if they're balancing or not. It's just the reality. Energy doesn't lie, right? 
And so we have this beautiful, so they just commented that they found us. They were commenting on how they found soul and have released completely anything needed from their person, right? Pure surrender, pure soul, pure wholeness, worthiness of soul. And soon enough, I, I don't even know if it was a week, I think just a couple days, she had another comment where it was like, and I remember talking to Elizabeth like, hey, did you see those comments? She, she, me and her were like, whoa, she's deep. She's so deep. She's going to manifest her person. I already knew. I just felt it. I just felt it. And it was like a no brainer. It was like when we say, of course, it was an of course. Like as soon as she commented that her person came back after so many years, her person has come back. It wasn't a surprise. I think I actually screenshot, I sent it to Elizabeth, like, remember that? I knew it. I just felt it. And we really, I really, really want you guys to feel your person coming in when you're in the vibration of love, when you're in the vibration of soul, the vibration that is worthy, the vibration that is whole and complete. And I want you to know, my love, this beautiful soul, your person came in when you're in that vibration it isn't them coming in when you're in lack mode it isn't when you're in in victim mentality that feels like the world is is after you right because we'll see those comments and i already know right after they post that the next day the person's nowhere near the person's um running and Man, they... and it's not that they need our people never need anything from us really it's the same thing how we crave their energy they're craving us in the only way they know how to at that moment right in the way that makes sense at that moment but they never need anything from us so to even say like like i feel like they're trying to get something from me yeah our people don't. really don't need anything from us mm -hmm. they crave us when we are their energy. But it's not them being a manipulator, right? They're not a narcissist. It's This is how you know it's a TF journey. It's not a 3D like jerk. <laughs> this person keeps coming in when I'm, I'm in the energy. I can't explain it. When I'm in the energy of soul, they come right in when I release them and focused on me. And this is what I was trying to explain with the energy. So I really want you guys to Feel this. So I want you guys to all just close your eyes and just really feel the vibration of love. Feel into being whole, being complete, being everything, being source, being God, being your person, right? Because they're you, your soul. Feel in this energy of being whole and complete now. This energy is who you are. You are soul, you are perfect, and you are tied to source. You are not separate from anyone, and you're definitely not separate from your person because you're one. This very energy needs nothing and is everything. When you feel into your wholeness, being the true soul that you are, is you being completely the God source energy that God intended to be. One that is free, one that is untouchable, and is radiating this love when you're in this energy and i really want you to feel this because we know this beautiful soul when you're in this energy your person's right there right that's why we said of course right with the other um, client example i gave you the person's there and you stay in this energy your person is there as soon as you Go into the part of you that isn't what I listed. Did you hear the list that I gave you? Do you feel that, my love? Now I want you to stop feeling that. And I want you to get close to the energy of what this question said. I'm not worthy. 
right? Do you, can you feel that? It's like two different energies, right? Now I'm, I'm in the lower scale. <laughs> what do you mean I'm not worthy? I'm sold, damn it, right? <laughs> the conscious part of you can't swallow mind's fears. And your person who is you, who is that energy of soul, who is infinite, the part of you that is one with all, the part of you that is one with your person now, knows and that's the part of you that brings you your soul. So when you're sending out the energy of lack, limitations, unworthiness, being used, right? To be even put your vibration in that state to be used, to be disregarded, discarded, right? Those are all energies of a really low vibration. Me and Elizabeth just talked about this. How can we ensure that we don't have people do us wrong, right? Well, we're not in the energy of even thinking someone's going to do the wrong things to us. So we're never, it's never going to happen. No one's ever going to take advantage of us or use us because we are not in that vibrational match. And so when you raise your energy to this place, when your person can come, and that's the only place they can come in, by the way, is being in the energy of love and being in the energy of soul and being whole and complete. Your person isn't going to come in to complete you. This is not that. This is energy. Your person's going to come in when you remember who you are as soul as already complete. And so all of these mind energies that feels incomplete, that feels unworthy and is using our person to feel whole, that's the part of us that we have to release and align with the part of us that is our person. And so when you shift back to I'm whole, I'm complete, I'm soul, what the heck was mine saying? Because there's no way, there's no way I'm going to take in that part of energy of me that feels unworthy. There's no way I'm going to take in that part of me that feels like I'm being used and abused and taken advantage of because that's a really low vibration. And I'm not going to manifest through that energy. There's just no way that I can stay in that state. And if I do, then I'm just going to be in a cycle, right? That's that loop where you're going to manifest and bringing things that don't match your energy. And your person isn't that energy, by the way. So when you're sending in that energy and being in that energy, you've then now given your person this block between the both of you where he can no longer come because the energy doesn't match. He's your soul. Why would he come in when you're in lack? Why would he come in when you forgot who you are? So again, we as soul, we don't have to worry about our person. We don't have to worry about anyone else, what anyone thinks. We just have to remember who we are. And who are we? We are this infinite observer that is whole, is complete, needs nothing, wants nothing, and is everything. When you start to remember who you are, you start to bring in more of what you are, which is your person, which is the peace, which is the love, which is the joy. And naturally, your person is there too, but this is a big but to all of you. This is part of balancing to keep your soul because you just remembered your soul, right? So your person came in to keep your soul. You have to stay in soul. You have to stay in soul and it's really hard. We get it. So you have to stay in soul and stay in that energy and that vibration of soul so that your soul can keep bringing you more and more of what you are. And you're doing it for you. You're not doing it for them. You're not basing your alignment on the results of what your person brings you. You're basing your alignment based on how you feel. On your now moments. On your every now moment experience. So that you can raise your energy. Feel into the goddess, source, love energy that you are. That is whole. That is complete. That needs nothing. Wants nothing. And is everything. This is the place where you're most magnetic. 
And this is the place where you are untouchable, where you're not giving away your power, your light, and who you are to anyone else, especially your person. Your person doesn't need anything from you, my love. So don't think that you have to create like certain tasks and things that they have to do to fulfill you when they don't need anything from you. That's the unconditional love. Why does the mind need so much from your person when they don't want anything? They just want you to be. They just want you to be in soul and that's when your soul brings them in. That's literally all. And they don't even know they want soul. (laughs) They just know soul shows them here. Here's the energy. She's ready. She's not in that victim mind mentality that is in the lower scale. She's in soul now. Go ahead. (laughs) And that's where you balance. You balance you. You stay in soul for you. And your soul will keep bringing you. You. And this is what happens when people get their person. They go back to start making it about their person again. Start figuring their person out and how their person can keep fulfilling them. You have to stay and realign back to the part of you that is and was whole when they came in. And that's the part of you that you continue to balance regardless of when they come in, when they don't come in, when they call you or don't call you. The more you are being, right? And so this beautiful soul who got nonstop contacting, you are a freaking being, my love. Go back to that state of being that didn't give enough. And this is the same beautiful soul who would like not pick up, who would be so tired to like want to see their person because they chose them. That, I want you to go back to the spiritual badass you that gauged your energy, chose you always, whether your person is there or not. And I can guarantee this beautiful soul, the more and more you're choosing you, the more and more you're going to feel amazing, the more and more you're going to feel the wholeness and completeness that you are. And that's literally the perfect recipe of how and when your person came in. And that's the only state your person comes in, my loves. All of you guys, where's my energy at now? Where's my energy at now? Don't worry about what happened yesterday or a month ago. Where is my energy at now? Because when they were reaching out to you, your energy was high vibing. Your energy was focused on you, your energy didn't give enough. You didn't even care they were reaching out. That, and the fact that the mind cares now is the reason why you're not able to have it. It's completely focused on being able to be at the state where you need nothing, where you are free from mind's need of your person to do anything for you to prove your wholeness as soul. I know this got really, really, really deep, but this is all good stuff for this beautiful soul to remember, to remember that this is part of balancing, my loves. This is part of you balancing back to you. Your mind started to make it about them again and started to judge how they should show you how they should show up to prove to you of what you are (laughs) when you were making it all about you and he couldn't stop reaching out. It was like an everyday thing, every day, every day, every day. We don't sit back and look at the energy. All we do is just say, hey, they were contacting me all the time and now they stopped contacting me. It wasn't my energy so balanced. Oh my gosh, I'm in mine. Let me get back to, right? We're never looking, we're forgetting to go within, right? That's that faith and balancing when you're balancing back to you so you can get to that permanent relating experience where you're never looking to them you're always gauging your energy and looking at where am i at where am i at where am i at and that my love is where you're most powerful we love you guys so much we hope you have an amazing day bye love bye love